Alrighty then, folks, it is time, it is time for the underground tunnel. So I found out in the last episode who Trimi really was, how she's a dirty traitor, and how she's kind of blind for not really gives it who her brother was, but oh well, that's all behind us. We also tried to ditch her. There's a random fade to black in the middle when they went to sleep, and some other stuff. But anyway, we are now going to go under the the giant tunnel that leads between Russia and North America, because in this world, Russia and America actually got along, which is a scary, scary thought. We also got the card key, too, which gets one of the better mobile suits when we get the chance. And one of my favorites. You might remember I mentioned it earlier. It's that one that you can glitch through if you are if you do it well enough. I have to say, I've had at least two people say I'm a lying bastard and that it doesn't actually work, and then another guy who's like, Oh god, that actually worked. <laughs> it just makes me so happy. It's like somebody tries hard enough and they eventually figure it out. And then, like you go through half the game and you're just like, Wow, I do... I one-shot the Zock. What's going on? You actually can't get it till after the Zock, because you don't have access to the G system till then. But, oh well. Yeah, repair units. And a hacking tool. We'll actually use that one in this place. We'll probably use... I think there's three? Yeah, more cold climate type GMs. Nothing really fun to fight. Without GM snipers, these guys are just kind of weird to fight. They're not really hard. I remember last time, though, I had funnels fighting these guys. And, like, I had one shot every single one of them. Hey, repair kit DXs can hurt. I don't know if I'm going to grind after this next city. Uh, because there's something in the unicorn base we want and we want a lot of. But it's kind of hard to get E caps in that area. So, we might grind, we might not. I'm not even gonna, you know... Not gonna waste bits, because we don't really need to. Yeah, we could have got that fight done quicker, but oh well. And we also get, I think, Nemo and Rick Diaz data in the Unicorn Headquarters. So we might go build those. I usually skip the Nemo and I usually skip the Rick Diaz. Well, actually, I get the Rick Di Diaz and I skip the Nemo. Because the Rick Diaz is kind of okay, but the Nemo is really trash. I don't even know if we get a GM2. I don't remember if that was part of the game or not. It might be, but they're both not very good. Oh, crap. They're chasing us still. Gavi Coon, you're alive! Serena's mysterious voice. It's also not damaged, that's the surprising part. I guess you'd be missing, like, some arms or something. Bazuli Maiko. Remember, the big Zom never exploded, it just kind of, like, disintegrated? I also have a theory on that too, but we'll find out eventually why that happened, or at least I will tell you guys why I think it happened. Gavi did the one thing we needed, him to deliver that mobile suit. Alright, so I'll tell you, for the longest time, I thought Gavinger had just stole his headdress, was pretending to be Bazuli. There's no reason to have that, and uh, Vargas actually points out he knew who Bazuli was before he joined the Dark Alliance later. But I still thought he was the same person as Gavinger for the longest time.
he's playing the char tactic. He's just going to commit mass genocide, force everyone up into space colonies. Yeah, so Vladdy's Arts plan is to drop Luna 5 onto the plan onto uh Tibet, Lhasa specifically, which is the Federation capital at this point, and create a nuclear winter, forcing everyone up into space. It'll save the environment of Earth, but it'll also destroy it. So the one downside Bazuli has to Gavinger is that I think level 36 Gavinger actually learns charge. Bazuli does not. We never got that high, so it never really matters, but still. I believe he has shoot all though, but I could be wrong. Yeah, he is basically the exact same thing we gave him. Yeah, he has shoot all. He doesn't have the better or no, he does have the better version even. He has shot burst and Gatling body. Awesome, so combat should be easier. Also notice how much higher level he is than us. We are way under leveled. Yeah, usually I'm a higher level at this point, but oh well. But yeah, we have to literally walk the, the length of the Bering Strait, I think it's called. Like, it's super long. And this is also the dungeon where if you keep... If you stand in front of the door, your half your mobile suit disappears. They're actually slower than Tristan, so you, you aren't, but still. Also, remember Arctic Leaders are those guys that would uh, overload Fritz... Or, not Fritz, uh... Tristan literally every attack. But hey guys, you see that? That's a gun cannon too. Not the GM cannon too, which I always thought was the gun cannon too. An actual gun cannon too. That was implemented near the end of the one year war to help with some of the ranged combat the Federation was having because they lacked uh, artillery units in space. And ships were kind of working up towards it, but not very much, and they needed something more mobile that they could deal with. Except for all the planes they put forward were super expensive. To the point where I believe only one gun cannon 2 was ever produced, and it was almost shelled immediately. It would eventually be used by uh, scavengers in 0092, I think? Hey, an ECAP S, a single one. And it improves he got Claw L. Why did they give us one of those? I mean, High God Claws are nice, but... The heck? That would have been nice, you know, back when we were still fighting with... Uh, Lee Fang slash Shinoka. Hey, enemy call. That attracts enemies similar to how invisibility, uh... Invisibility repels enemies that attracts them. 
uh, super useful if you're training. You know, and I think I'll leave combat in here just to break up the monotony of I'm running forward again. Occasionally finding a chest, running forward again. I need to turn the stealth system on, though. God damn it. You kidding me? You guys remember how I said this dungeon was going to be long, right? I, I definitely wasn't kidding. It goes on. And this happened to be the end. That's funny. I remember there being, like, an area you kind of, like, walked to the side of, and there was, like, loot in there. And there was, like, three uh, electronic locks in there that you had to use hacking tools on. Maybe I was thinking of, like, the dungeon we're going to go to and... Two missions time, because it kind of looks the same. Hmm. What was I thinking about? I don't even remember, to be honest. Seriously. It's somewhere like Willamity area, Willamette area, maybe. I remember it in not exactly being in California, but kind of. But since the map's so weird, it's kind of hard to tell kind of thing. Is this a dead end? Oh, no, okay. Makes me feel a little bit better. And I really should be using Invisible, because I think we get free... Uh, Free lodgings again when we get to the unicorn base, but oh well. It's gonna be a long time before we get back to Isengrad to buy more of those. No, I, I think this might actually be like LA. Or even San Diego. It's kinda low. I'm pretty sure San Diego would be like right here. I was definitely wrong. We're here to raid you. Give us all your money and your food. I mean, this is like, what, the fourth time we've done that? I mean, like, people are horrible at keeping lookouts if they didn't see dudes in bubble suits walking so close to their base. Because we're not the only people that don't mobile suits. And there's other people who probably have worse intentions than we do. Should be calling us, like, straight off. Where's Cavenger? He... He gave... He joined the enemy and gave us this hairy dude with a wolf on his head. It was kind of weird. also the point I want to point out. She would probably recognize Gavinger if he was really Bazuli. Don't you think?
Well, we did betray the Isengrad army a couple of times. I'm pretty sure I at least robbed him once. Um, Trimi, you were there for Eldar Samnia. You know, where we met her, and then when we were walking up to her in Isengrad, you commented on her? You should know. I mean, we didn't. You were there. But, oh, wait, we actually automatically go there. I was going to say, as usual, we're going to ignore the crap out of her and loot the village. Reese the Arch. Oh, hey guys, uh, I just want you to know I'm ready to die for you if I need to. I know we just met, but... The Zeta Gundam. It's kind of okay, but you'd much rather have a new, but... You'll take the Zeta if we give it to you, goddammit. We ironically found it in Japan. In a giant chest marked Zeta Gundam Data. So, I made fun of this in the last one. Traditionally, you need data from the Gundam Mark II the Gundam and the Rick Diaz to create the Zeta, because the Hakushiku was actually based off the Delta Gundam, which was what the Zeta Gundam was originally supposed to be, but they couldn't get the transformable frame to work without bending the frame to utter loving hell after about three attempts. So the Hakushiku was a byproduct, but it does kind of make sense that they're going to reverse engineer the Zeta from the Hyakoshiki, even though it doesn't really have the transformation module. This game doesn't really let us have transformable mobile suits. So maybe in this world they just kind of ignored it? Maybe? This is also the weird thing about uh, Hal giving us the Gundam. is like Hal knows about this and knows what we were trying to do. But he helped us do it? Yeah, you know that one you were we were using when you yelled at us? It was that one. Today we get Mark II data. So the fact that we get Mark II data means that in the end game when we go to build or uh, when we go to the final dungeon, we won't actually get more more data to create the Mark II. Only mobile suits that were given to us do we get that data. Which includes one of the really good wing suits, randomly enough. Which actually kind of makes it worth it, but you have to fight an enemy who literally has a 1 in 8% chance of instantly killing you. And it's not like a quick fight, it's like a boss fight. So, 1 in 8 turns you could just die. I'm not gonna do that dungeon, like, I, I just can't. I've tried many times. And what you get out of the very end of that dungeon isn't worth it. Though, I will say you get the Atomic Bazooka from the GPO too. Which is all kinds of fun, but I'd rather hack that in if I could find out how. I don't actually know how. Is this one of those places with free lodgings? No. Poo. Eh, it's kind of expensive too. I don't want to deal with that. But hey, our friends are here, but more importantly, we need to go loot shit. Mini G system. Well, I'll show you this and then on the episode, and then next episode we can loot shit. And then go down to the dungeon, do most of it, and then I'll probably end it. 
while we go and we grind for the things I'm about to show you. Oh. Oh. I had honestly forgotten about this. I was actually going to point out this. This is what we want. We want at least three of them, maybe more. This is the back booster, the ranged attack upgrades, HP upgrade, and speed upgrade all at once. It's not as good as all three of them, except for the extra energy, or the extra propellant, but still really freaking good. We're actually going to build two of them right now. And one of the enemies in the G system we're about to go to to build the Mark II actually dro uh, drops E-caps. So I'm going to get most of the way through there, and then I'm going to go and train a bunch to try to get either two to three more of those. Because after we leave this place and we get through the next part of the mission, we're never allowed to come back here. Or at least when the time we can come back here is way late in the game, like really late. So we want to pull this off, and we want to pull this off. And where is the back booster? Yeah, so it takes three slots. That's one of the largest ones, but the only thing we're missing is some speed. Because the enhanced wing gets us 60, where is I believe this gets us 40. Yeah, enhanced wing gets a, would be at 203, whereas this is only at 83, but... This helps, like, everywhere else, so why not? And do we want to give it to Aeon, or do we want to give it to Tristan? Um, I think we're going to give it to Aeon for now. But yeah, it's the Double Zeta's backpack, if you're curious. And we're also going to change the colors on it for the Gelgoog. Uh, optional one, I guess. But yeah, this is the double ba uh, the double booster from the, uh, or the booster from the double Zeta, I should say. And the rest of this is normal green, so normal green, yeah. But yeah, folks, that is that. Like the episode if you liked it. Dislike it if you don't. We'll be back next time for some more stuff. Good night.